I felt like my body had failed me, that I couldn't do what I was meant to do, and that um, I felt an emptiness and void inside myself and my heart that could never be filled. Couples struggling with the problems of infertility often find themselves searching for answers to questions they never dreamed they'd be asking. Most of all, they're asking, why us? Why can't we have a baby? Truth is, answers rarely come easily, creating an emotional roller coaster made even more difficult by the range of options that leave the mistaken impression that a cure for infertility is just around the corner, or in some cases, already available. For the next few minutes, we'll take you beyond the hype and headlines to present the facts about infertility. We'll examine one popular approach and treatment to infertility that you probably have heard about and the unintended consequences that come with it. You'll also hear from one couple who tried and failed using this approach, but then realized their dream of having a child thanks to a new women's health science called NAPRO technology. NAPRO is not a cure for infertility, but we believe that NAPRO technology offers women and men experiencing infertility new exciting hope in their journey to parenthood. Infertility is typically defined as the inability of a couple to achieve pregnancy when not using contraceptives through random acts of intercourse over the course of at least one year. This condition impacts more than six million women of reproductive age in the United States alone, nearly 13 percent of all married women. For reasons not fully understood, the incidence of infertility is significantly higher than just two decades ago. The National Center for Health Statistics reports that nine million women have used infertility services in an attempt to treat their condition. One of those women is Stephanie Eppolite. Just more than a year after the Sacramento, California attorney married her husband, Anthony, the couple came face to face with an issue they'd never even considered, infertility. I remember telling a friend of mine, you know, we were in our journey now of, of not being able to have a family. I said, who would have ever dreamed the day we walked down the aisle that we would ever have to face an issue? You assume you will have a family. Who doesn't assume that? I mean, you're both healthy people, as far as you know. Um, now, granted, you don't have full-blown examinations before you have, you know, get married. But I remember telling her, who would have ever dreamed that we'd be walking this road to hell? Pardon my vernacular of the uncertainty, the unknown, the unanswered questions. Why us? The science of making babies. Like a growing number of other couples. The Epilites sought answers at a fertility clinic featuring what's known as Assisted Reproductive Technology, or ART. This multi-billion dollar industry attracts mainstream media attention with its focus on an artificial procedure known as in vitro fertilization, or IVF. The primary goal with IVF is finding ways to achieve a pregnancy. The underlying causes of infertility are largely ignored and skipped over. He kept saying that the only thing that could work for the two of us would be, I believe it was called ICSI IVF, which is the, and he described to us exactly the, the treatment and, and the technique and all that, but that was basically, um, in his estimation, the only thing that would work for the two of us. And that was basically the consult. After that, then, um, they forwarded us to a, someone like a financial planner or financial consultant in that group that then described to us um, the various packages you could purchase. Anthony's the math man. He dialed into that a little bit more than I did. I was just awestruck that we were, it's like buying a car. ICSI IVF is short for intracytoplasmic sperm injection a popular procedure with couples trying to conceive a child. With ICSI IVF, the man provides sperm through an act of masturbation, which is then injected into a number of ova, or human eggs, which have been surgically removed from the woman. A number of injected ova are placed in a petri dish, where it is hoped growth will begin to take place. If it does, 
the tiny elements of human life are surgically implanted back into the woman for gestation to take place. But as the popularity of assisted reproductive technologies increases, so also do the health concerns of the children they produce. According to data published by the Centers for Disease Control, more than one-third of all assisted reproductive technology pregnancies result in twins, triplets, or more. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found babies conceived through ICSI and other IVF procedures are more than twice as likely to have major birth defects. Other studies implicate IVF for a significantly higher incidence of low birth weights, cancer, and developmental issues that can lead to other problems like speech impairment. IVF procedures often require the so-called selective reduction or surgical destruction of human embryos that are typically produced in clusters, numbering as many as six or more at a time. In many ways, this is a technology that creates life by destroying life. For these and other reasons, many couples find assisted reproductive technology procedures dehumanizing and morally unacceptable. But they also believe assisted reproductive technology is their only alternative. Sitting there, I felt like I violated myself, my God, um, and everything I believed in as a human being. But when you want something that bad, and they can see that, um, you go to places where you never thought in your life you would go. Even though it wasn't something that uh, <laughs> I ever anticipated, we wanted to have a family. And, um, you know, at that point in time, that looked like that was the only way presented to us that we could go forward to do that. The Epilites spent nearly $25,000 on two cycles of ICSI IVF treatments and still no baby. Although they were emotionally devastated, they were not ready to give up their dream of having a child. That's when Stephanie got on the phone and called an old friend, a certified fertility care practitioner who was ready and eager to help reintroduce the couple to a much different approach to infertility and reproductive health. The Creighton Model Fertility Care System and NAPRO technology. The Creighton Model Fertility Care System is a highly effective approach to human reproduction and women's health. Developed in cooperation with the Creighton University School of Medicine in Omaha, Nebraska, and the Pope Paul VI Institute for the Study of Human Reproduction, the Creighton Model is built upon decades of clinical and basic science research conducted by reproductive health pioneers from around the world. Their research originally focused on medically successful and morally acceptable approaches for couples seeking to achieve or avoid pregnancy. This investigation into human fertility reached extraordinary heights when OBGYN physician Dr. Thomas Hilgers led a team of investigators who discovered and unlocked what they called the language of the woman's body. They found that by observing and charting changes taking place in the cervical mucus during a woman's menstrual cycle, known as biomarkers, times of fertility could be pinpointed with uncanny accuracy. This remarkably simple but scientifically documented method of achieving or avoiding pregnancy elevated family planning to a new level. For the first time ever, a standard was established to help couples safely and effectively navigate the complexities and uniqueness of their own individual 